Years ago, the typical catfishing trip consisted of me grabbing two or three fishing poles and either sitting on the bank or anchoring up on a spot that I thought looked good. Sometimes I got it right. I'd catch a few decent cats here and there, but other times, not so much. There were a lot of trips where I would just, I'd, I'd get skunked, especially when I didn't have a whole lot of time to fish. When you don't have a lot of time to fish, you need to be able to cover as much ground as possible to catch as many fish as possible. And in my opinion, I think that drift fishing is the best way to do that. Like I said, in my opinion, I feel that drift fishing is the best way to catch catfish. And the biggest reason I think so is because you can cover so much ground drift fishing. But if you've never done it before, there are some things you need to be aware of to do it right. If you're not doing it right, chances are it's going to be a huge headache. I remember the first time I tried drift fishing, you know, I'd seen a couple YouTube videos of people doing it. Um, they didn't really explain too much what was going on, what they were doing, and, and why. And it seemed like every couple seconds I was hung up. I'd get, I'd get one pole free, you know, break the line, lose my gear, which meant heavy weight. And, you know, I'd, I'd get that unstuck, unhung up, and the next one would be hung up. And, of course, I didn't catch anything. Um, I, I immediately, it was probably like half an hour of trying to do this, and I just said, screw it, I'm done. And I went to the boat ramp and went home. But after digging around, finding some tips, um, really learning how to correctly drift fish, it became my absolute favorite way to catch catfish. So in this video, we're going to go over four essential tips to help you successfully drift fish for catfish. And the first tip to successfully drift fishing for catfish is to slow down. Speed is critical for drift fishing. And, and when I say speed, I mean the lack of speed. You need to keep your speed below one mile per hour. And actually the slower, the better, especially when the water is colder. I like to keep around half a mile per hour. Um, and if the water's cold, I'll even go like 0.2. Keeping the right speed can be easy when there's a little current or a little wind just barely pushing it. You might have to give yourself a nudge, you know, a little faster, a little slower here and there, but it's not that hard. When it gets really hard is when the current or the wind is really pushing you and you got to figure out a way to slow yourself down. If the problem is too fast of current, you need to turn your boat into the current and just use your trolling motor. And it kind of sucks, especially if you've got one of the foot pedal uh, trolling motors where you got to keep your foot on it at all times. Um, but that's how I do it. And it's, you keep it, your trolling motor set on a low setting just fast enough or just enough power to slow yourself down enough and is all you need. And it's it kind of wish you kind of get a calf workout at the same time, but it works. And if you're on a lake and the wind is a little too high and pushing you too fast, then you what you need to get is some drift socks. It's a lot easier to deal with than having to use your trolling motor the whole time. Um, I just put one on each corner and uh, it keeps me perpendicular into the wind and it keeps me at a pretty decent speed. And the second tip is to use heavy sinkers. Heavier sinkers are going to help you keep your bait straight below the boat. Um, if you have too low of weight, anytime you turn, you make adjustments, your bait is going to just move and, and drift in different directions, and it just increases your chances of getting hung up. Now, if your boat is constantly moving in the same direction, never turning or twisting, then you probably don't have to worry about it as much. But I would bet that there's never going to be a time that you aren't going to twist. You're never going to go perfectly straight and never have to make adjustments. And if you do, you're probably spending too much time messing with your trolling motor and not fishing. Those heavy sinkers are going to help keep your line straight down and, and prevent them from tangling with each other. And when I say heavy weights, I don't necessarily mean 10 ounces. Or, you know, you don't have to go up to like a pound of weight, but five ounces is probably my minimum. And with heavier weight, I know they're going to cost a lot more. So it, it definitely hurts a little more when you get hung up and, and lose some gear, but I promise it'll pay off in the end. And the third tip is to keep your bait about three to five feet off the bottom. Consider three to five feet as the Goldilocks zone. It's not too deep and it's not too shallow. If you've got your bait too close to the bottom and, you know, dragging along, you run the risk of getting hung up a lot more. And that is a pain in the ass. And if you go too much higher, you run the risk of just drifting over fish completely. When you get your lines in the water, let them sink all the way to the bottom and then reel up four or five times. Uh, it's not an exact thing because every real retrieval rate is different, but I found four or five times to be pretty close to ideal. Um, it also depends, you know, how long your leader lines are, but mine are typically around 18 inches, so that's about perfect for me. You do need to keep an eye on the depth, though. Um, if you come across a deep hole, you're going to want to drop your lines to keep them in that ideal zone, that ideal three to five feet. 
And worse than that is if you come across a shallow spot and if you're not paying attention, you'll drag your baits along the bottom, you will get hung up and then you will have a bad time. And the fourth tip to drift fishing for catfish is to plan out your course. If you're targeting a specific ridge or maybe several deep holes or maybe a couple pockets of structure, you should mark your course so you can stay on track. This will help you stay exactly where you're wanting to fish. And it, Imagine if you're drift fishing a specific ridge and you aren't staying on course. You either drift too far in, you run the risk of dragging your baits and getting hung up. We've already talked about how much of a pain in the ass that is. Or you drift too far in and you miss those fish that are maybe hanging tight to that drop off. And if you're targeting structure, you could miss that, that whole wood pile or rock pile completely and think there's just nothing there when you just blew right on by it. So that was four tips to drift fishing for catfish. It is definitely one of those things where it just takes time and practice to get good at, especially when it comes to trying to stay on course. But I promise you, if you just get out there and do it, you will catch more fish. If you have any more tips for drift fishing for catfish, leave those down in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button if you like this video, and make sure you're subscribed so you can stay informed.